All right. Good morning and welcome to this week's Kubernetes, oh, Kubert, sorry, community meeting. Can anyone hear me? Yes. Hi. All right. Good deal. I am hosting from a hotel this morning in Seattle. So I'm a little bit out of my ailment, but we'll go ahead and start screen sharing and pull up the agenda. Kat, I'm not seeing the icon. Is this being recorded? Uh, yes, the, the meeting should be recorded. I think I got the alert when I was joining. Yep. Yeah. It is, but I'm not seeing the little button. Um, I just tried hitting the record button, and I don't have permissions to start the recording. I can see the record button in the top left. It's flashing. Okay. Yeah, me too. All right, in that case, we'll go ahead and see. Takes 20. Thank you for starting a new template. Um, if everyone can go ahead and jump into the meeting agenda and log their attendance. And of course, while we're all doing that, if you have anything to add to the agenda, feel free to add anything that you would like to talk about. Um, we will also invite you to go ahead and introduce yourself if you're new to the meet, new to the Kubert meeting and um, give us an opportunity to welcome you. All right, looks like things are being added. So thank you for that. All right, going ahead and diving into the first agenda item, Andrew Burton. Um, Hello. Looks like you had something to say about the meeting notes. Yeah, sorry about that. I, I don't really know what happened, but I've heard from a couple of people now that um, the formatting was, um, uh, how is it described, unfortunate. Um, so I don't know, like it looks fine in mine and in the, the Google groups, but um, uh, I, if, I don't know what happened. Uh, sorry about that. Hopefully it won't happen again. Um, and they'll look nice and shiny next time. Uh, if anyone has any uh, idea as to why copy paste from the Google Doc in an email might have transferred it to plain text, I'd like to know so I can potentially avoid that problem in the future. Thank you, Andrew. Um, and uh, it seems you have something to say about KubeCon. Yes. Um, so we received an email yesterday. I'll send, I'm halfway through writing a draft today. I just haven't had time to send it um, about a virtual office hours. Um, oh, what I can do actually is, it would be helpful if I posted the link into the, hmm. um, so here are the, we're an incubating project, and so we're eligible to all these things. However, after discussing with um, people who are expecting to be there, it doesn't look like we're going to have enough people to man a kiosk, uh, which is one of the options. Doesn't necessarily look like we'll have enough people to warrant getting a specific uh, meeting room, um, uh, which just really leaves us with the project office hours. So I'll send out an email asking for if anyone's interested in, in um, helping, helping run one of them. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Andrew. That's great. Looking forward to seeing everyone there. Um, all right. Going into the open floor items, we have a few things still populating. Alice, um, it looks like you have yeah. some GitHub repository stuff to discuss. Yeah, uh, so I sent the email on a couple of weeks ago and actually the question is if you want to host uh, the work I'm doing on my GitHub account in Qbert. Just to summarize, um, so the idea is to have a small Golang uh, program that has uh, 
help you to create killer VM with the file test. And also uh, you can run comparable tests in standard containers. Um, so I have it on my GitHub, but uh, I would just like to know if that could be interesting for the community to host in Qvert organization. So I would be curious if something like that belongs as a component in a larger mono repo that could be like general examples, testing and like use type cases. I don't, I don't know if that would be appropriate or not. Just comes to mind. Do we have something like this? Um, I don't know that we have anything for that yet. Mm, because so I got some feedback on that work. There are people that are interested. Um, we also discussed in the scope of Kiagnos uh, that has its own uh, repo. Uh, for people that doesn't don't know what Kiagnos, it's uh, like a framework to deploy test, uh, mm -hmm. it's, but it doesn't aim to be Qvert only. Oh, I see. And that's why I, I mean, I can create an organization with just um, my code, uh, but I don't know, it seems a bit. Uh... Um, if anyone has thoughts on the call right now, uh, it'd be a great time to kind of pipe up, even if they're unfinished thoughts and you just want to think about it out loud. I, I like this idea. If, if I understand it correctly, I think this is the first time I'm actually looking at it. But it's basically, you're saying it's a, a central point within the Qubit repo for us to put uh, test VMs. Yeah, so right now I've been working on storage only uh, with a file, but more generic could be that we have network uh, benchmark tooling or um, maybe and you want to use stress inside the VM or this kind of things. And uh, maybe that could be a collection. I, I, just, had, I just did it with a, a file, but uh, could be done for uh, for other for other um, area. And this is just for development. This isn't for users to use. Um, this is actually for uh, benchmark, so for performance or so with the file basically. Um, so you can see in the example, uh, you can have a compare create graph for. Uh, containers, for example, and for VMs, and see how bad, for example, your uh, um, VM perform in comparison to, um, to the containers. But more generally, you could also have only benchmark for your VMs. It's not rocket science. It's just, uh, it's just like a helper for, for users to to create Kubert VM with already everything set up. Is that something that we sh should do in a medium more like a blog post or something? Um, I mean, we can have a very lengthy blog that describes so you can create a VM, but this that does already for you. So for example, it has a, con um, a container disk uh, that has, um, for example, already Podman install, uh, SSH install, and then uh, basically the tool configure um, Podman inside the VM to run the containerized test. So you really need to, it's, it's a very specific setup, but uh, it allows you basically to run the same test uh, in a VM and in a container. So for example, okay. if you have that's if right. you have a storage driver, you are interested to know how it performs with containers or with Qvr VM, you could use this. So that's a really yeah. neat test. Yeah, and you need to know a lot of things and set up a lot of things. So this basically try to help uh, and give uh, 
an idea. Yeah, so from, from the thread, you can see that uh, oral uh, reply with the like, yeah, nose. Um, we discuss about this um, offline. I already also give a summary. Um, and then there was somebody from Kubernetes that was interested just in, in the test because I think they run FIO test uh, manually basically. I'm just catching up. Um, so yeah, I mean, you can you can just uh, read that. Um, right now, I'm, I'm just asking if uh, we'd be interested to host uh, this kind of work in QWERC organization or create a new one or, I mean, I, I agree with Kat, probably we could have also separate uh, organization for examples or things like this. The only problem I see is that if mine is the only repo yeah i could see um a, a single repo hosted mm -hmm. by the kubert project which is where several different testing scenarios might go kind of like mm -hmm. the kubert ci but a more general user testing framework um do you see this in kubert org or a separate organization Personally, I think it makes sense in the Kubert org. If so long as it, you know, also invites other testing yes. solutions into that same repo. That's how I see it. So here's an interesting question. Would this be a reasonable place to put the um, the kind of lab VMs that we just have as like the example Seros VM and uh, the little Fedora VM that we have that in, in the lab examples. Uh, you mean the con the official container disk? Uh, um... Well, just just the uh, oh, I thought we were looking at um, uh, like VM definitions as well. This is just for the container disk definitions. This is a testing fr framework for running Theo side by side in a container okay. and a virtual machine, if I understand correctly. Yes. Oh, okay. I thought we were, were talking about whether this would be a, a place for um, kind of test VMs in general and, and uh, like a, a wider you know, kind of target there. So if you open the container disk uh, uh, from that repo, that's uh, my test VM. So basically that I'm creating container disk uh, so basically, I have just uh, some uh, libgustfs tool that helped me to um, customize the Fedora, Cloud Fedora. For example, I'm creating a users or I'm installing various packages um, like Cloudini, Podman, SSH, QMA uh, Guest Agent. And then I'm using this in order to run containerized tests inside the VM. Yeah, so for example, you can get, uh, um, if you just open one of the, um, if you go back to example and you open one of the picture, uh, PNG, yeah. Yeah, so for example, you can see that the VM and the pod perform pretty similar. So this is something that you can get uh, with this setup. That's is your cool. tool also generating uh, these pictures? Sorry? Is your tool also generating these uh, amazing pictures? Um, so um, there is like uh, in the example, there is a, a script uh, that you can use to create the picture. Um, but I'm not generating directly on the cluster because um, then you need to copy the, uh, the file uh, outside the cluster. So basically you can just retrieve the file log and then from the file log create all the picture you want. Um, there is like a plot, uh, yeah, plot P, uh, you can use this. That's uh, but I, I'm, I'm creating those pictures from the file log that I copy out 
fr out from the VM and the pod. So there is, for, for example, this tool has a, a command that uh, helps you to copy out uh, um, the output. That's really anyway, neat. Um, yeah, it's a very basic uh, things, but I think it could help people to try, for example, a file test. Uh, And maybe others, I don't know, maybe there are some network uh, tooling that generates also this kind of uh, output and then you can copy and... Um, another option that we could do is create an awesome list. Mm -hmm. um, awesome lists seem to get a decent amount of traffic on GitHub and we can reference it back to your repo if you would be able to keep that open. I don't know if that's a... Mm. something to do i don't know yeah um just if yeah maybe we can if you don't want to create immediately a repo and just see if people start contributing to it we can also reference it and uh, if we see that there are uh, people wants to contribute to it we can always move in move it to qbert uh, org mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. Um, so is the next step to open an issue and then either ask for voting on whether to move the repo into yeah. Kubert or create a repo to reference it, I guess? Yeah. OK. OK. Um, should I create it in Kubert, uh, Kubert? Um, or in the community? Probably community, I think, for this one. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Alice. Okay, thank you. Um, and let's see. Andrew, uh, Kabo? Yeah, I just wanted to inform that I finished work at uh, live migration over uh, pod networking connected to this as bridge. And I don't know what to do next. There should be some review. So if somebody wants to make review, please go ahead. <laughs> uh, yeah, I will review it today. Thank you. No Thank you, David. Cool. Okay, and it looks like we have some PR specifically called out to go ahead and take a look at. Let's see, so it looks like this is 20 days old. And Is it attached to an issue? Doesn't look like it. Uh, do we have anyone on the call right now who wants to speak to that one? Otherwise it's assigned to reviewers. So it looks like it just simplifies a docs. Got it. <clears throat> yeah, I threw those three issues in there. Um, they're all related to the user guide kind of thing yep. yesterday. Just throwing them here for uh, wider eyes, I guess. I can go ahead and put in OK to test and look at them. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, that second one is the uh, newest version release yep. notes, docs so, update. Yep. That'd be good to get that stuff out. Thank you. Um, we don't have anything. Well, we do. 
sorry, I was looking funny. So there's effort to replace Docker with Podman in CI. I caught yeah. Hey, Cash. Yeah. I was just, um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Thank you. Yeah, I was just, I raised this on the mailing list already this week, but I just wanted to draw attention to it here again. Um, the bootstrap image that, that I'm referring to is used by quite a lot of the test lanes throughout a lot of the Kube projects. So just want to be aware that we're making this effort. Um, the plan to go forward is probably to create a bootstrap legacy image from, from the current bootstrap image so that projects can fall back to that legacy image if required. So if they have issues with the new Podman image. Um, but yeah, that's that's kind of the plan forward so far. I was just wondering if there's any opinions on the call with regards to this effort. Um, other than that, I've I've gotten great feedback on the mailing list already, so I'm happy with that. Yeah, thank you for bringing this up. It looks like you're, um, it's meaningful to to everyone. So. And with that, then there's nothing else on that topic. Then it looks like we have some bug scrub issues to jump through. Um, <clears throat> I hate to drop early. Can I get a volunteer to walk through the bug scrub? I am um, a little bit double booked for the second half of the hour. Um, I'm happy to walk through. Thank you, Andrew. I appreciate it. All right. In that case, I leave it in your capable hands. Thanks, Kat. Uh, Thank I'll basically do a lot of uh, finger pointing, I guess. Um, so this is the, the bugs I just kind of went through and noticed that they haven't had a lot of traction. Um, I only had the idea to actually start writing a quick description um for the last two um oh sorry you probably want me to share my screen uh, just uh can you see my screen yep yeah cool um unable to see qubit metrics information in prometheus um uh, there's a nice amount of information here um so the way I might just go through is just kind of like put them out there, everyone can see them. And if this is something that's within your realm, can you please um, uh, jump on, comment, or or find someone that you may know can can look at it. This is 15 days old. Um, where have I gone? Next one. Uh, support VNC screen resolution is greater than that. Um, this looks like more an enhancement than a bug. Seems fine. This one here. Um, bug relating to the SSH client not working Windows 10. Sorry, I've got to zoom. And then you're dropping down. What's the keyboard shortcut to scroll through tabs? You want to join? Uh, missing validation, VMI uh, spec affinity, missing validation checks. Um, a lot of information in this one. I think that's all good. So I could please jump on that. That's six days old. Um, we have a question here about the VM restart. Um, is there a way to count it? Looking for available metrics. And the final one. Um, this one's kind of interesting because it seems as though uh, cleanup is not cleaning up on the latest version. Um, and also linked to the doc. This is kind of a double whammy 
No, no, done it, done. Um, because we've got some quite old uh, release um, versions in our deleting. And so they're up here, I think, in the upgrade. Um, yeah, version 17, version 17, alpha to 17, stuff like that. Export release version 26. Um, which uh, on, on topic, the side segue, um, in MK Docs, uh, with an additional module that we can add, um, we can use variables. I wonder if it's worthwhile um, employing that so that we can just use a, um, a simple release variable that's related to our most recent release um, so that these always update over time. Um, does anyone have any thoughts about doing that or is there a reason to, to hard code uh, version releases in these documents? Strong thoughts. All right, well, I, um, I might wrap that up into a um, into an email then, or a, or a PR to do with the user guide in and of itself. Um, but if someone could please have a look at the bug related to the cleanup, that'd be great. Um, is that that's the last one? So that's everything uh, on our agenda. Does anyone have anything to add um, the last minute? Yes, he's on the left from the desk. Uh, we have uh, a very extensive uh, try and error uh, to do an auto uh, auto unattended installation of Windows 11. And we would like to know who we can talk to to update this information on the documentation. Because on Windows 11, several things need to be changed on the documentation. The Windows 10 works fine, but the Windows 11, we need to update several things uh, to make it work regarding <clears throat> drivers and uh how to completely do a windows 11 unattended installation who, who is in charge for the documentation for we be able to update the the documentation i guess i've got bad news and good news for you um and it's the same answer i don't think there's anyone necessarily in charge of the documentation um, which means that you're more than welcome to open up PRs to add that information and it will get um, reviewed by the user guide reviewers. Yes, that's we was reading the user guide and as is not feature complete. We find several things that we need to be added there. That's why we want to contribute with that. Sounds great. Uh, how we do that? Can you explain a little bit? Oh, yeah. Um, uh, probably the best thing to do will be to open um, one or a series of PRs to add that content to the, to the user guide. I don't think, and someone can please jump in here, I don't think it's worthwhile creating an issue to discuss necessarily how that's going to go about it. I, I presume this content is relatively straightforward. There's, we will need additional information about how to um, prepare a Windows 11 virtual machine. That's correct. Uh, I'm going to write uh, an email to the, the, the group, probably, and we work from there. That's great. Thank you. I will add that in the uh, GitHub repository for user guide and for uh, covert.github.io uh, as well. We do have uh, the readme set up with instructions on how to get your local environment set up to uh, 
kind of test the documentation uh, renderer and all that kind of stuff for, for local um, work? Yes, that was the base we use on the beginning, but now we, we figured it out what is missing because uh, let's say Windows 11 is a different animal <laughs> and <clears throat> a lot of things have changed and we, we would like to contribute back to the, 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 the community how we fix it in, in a proper way. Right. So what, what is the, the underlying question then? No, no, how to how, open how to? the documentation in a proper way. Okay, well, all, all I was pointing out was that we have a readme file telling how to uh, how to basically create PRs. Yes, let me see. Did you have that link, how, how to create a PR? Yeah, actually, Aliche put a, a link to the uh, repo in into chat and that should get you to the user guide. Yeah, user guide, okay. Uh, I follow the instruction there, thank you so much. Sure. And I think the, um, as Chandler pointed out, the, was the Qvert github.io repo has the um, like style guide, if I'm not mistaken. Cool, all right. Well, we look forward to seeing that. Um, does anyone else have anything to add before we close up? Right on. All right, thank you very much, everybody. And uh, have a lovely day, we'll see you next week. See you, bye. Thank you. Thank you.